article for news you can use i'm going to talk about uh today kind of the effects of what's happened with this um non-eviction type thing and what's what's going on there's an article that was in yesterday's uh, san jose paper the mercury news <clears throat> that talked about a one-time bay area tech worker this was a, a young man who'd made he was making a hundred thousand dollars a year working for one of the big three or four tech companies and um uh, this is a, a typical thing that's happening here in California, where we suspect is happening across the country. This guy, he and a friend had just rented a, kind of a luxury apartment in Oakland, like a month or two before COVID hit. And they agreed to pay $5,400 a month. Yeah, it's, I know it's expensive, but that's kind of what rents for high-end stuff, you know, uh, runs out there. Um, anyway, you know, almost immediately when, uh, COVID struck, he was unable to, they, he and his, and his uh, buddy were unable to make payments. They were both laid off. Um, and it goes on to talk about one in seven California renters are currently behind in their payments. I think it's more like two in seven, but anyway, a, a year and a month later, or, or even actually probably 11 months now later, uh, this guy has fallen behind $43,805 in his rent. He um, he agreed with the landlord to he had an early uh, uh, exit payment issue with the landlord. Finally, the landlord agreed to allow him to get out of his lease, uh, but not to not owe the payments that were owed. He went into another uh, apartment um, and was able to talk the the landlord into letting him in there. He had to pay only half of the $9,000 required security deposit. He was going to pay the other $4,500 over a period of time and immediately was unable to make, um, you know, any payments uh, on that deal as well. And so, you know, here he is now. He's got, uh, you know, in California, landlords can go ahead and get judgments for evictions, but not effectuate the eviction. In other words, kick people out. So, you know, there's some problems, obviously, in that in the whole model. California has attempted to to do something about them, but the, the long and short of it of this guy's story is, you know, a year later, he's forty four thousand dollars behind. He's got essentially two evictions um, on his record. He's going to have to pay those back. He's not able to get into another place. Um, and he's having to consult currently a bankruptcy lawyer. He and his, his uh, buddy both are going to have to see about discharging that. So, you know, it, it's an unusual and unfortunate set of issues that's going on. However, um, this is kind of the, the world we live in. So um, these landlords, you know, have a couple of choices. Uh, California's law that we talked about here a couple of weeks ago, um, there's a 2.6 billion rental relief proposal. The state will pay up to 80% of the low income tenants unpaid rent, but only if their landlords agree not to evict them and waive the remaining 20%. And then landlords who refuse the deal will receive just 25% of the tenants owed rent from the state. Now, keep in mind the state has ordered or has allowed these folks to not pay and is telling the landlord they have to take between 25 and 80% of what they're owed. Uh, in the case of this guy and his buddy, they don't even qualify for this program because this is for low income folks. Uh, so this proposal doesn't affect, um, you know, this this type of high end rental. But we're seeing this happen all over the place. This is going to probably be happening all over the country. You're going to end up seeing, I suspect, uh, and I hadn't really focused on this, but probably a huge amount of bankruptcies over the next couple of years. And probably Congress is going to get involved and rewrite the bankruptcy laws. So um, potentially making some of this debt non-dischargeable, because otherwise you've got an absolute clear uh, violation of the U.S. Constitution where the government has literally interfered with the uh, contracts between two private parties. And that in turn has you know, potentially created a, a, a big, big, big financial issue for the landlords with no relief. Um, like I said, th this program, this relief program that California has only applies to the low income renters, low income uh, type uh, 
rental property. So, you know, it's it's a, a sad state of affairs, but everybody's going to lose all the way around on a deal like this. And there's lots of deals like this out there. So um, this article goes on to say that this particular guy and uh, his buddy uh, have created, worked to create a tennis union with more than 60 other people from the seven story building that he occupied, um, you know, demanding free rent and free living, uh, from the owners and, um, the owners, you know, have, have told him to pound sand, but once again, these guys are looked at as the victim and, you know, everybody's a victim here except the government because all they have to do is tax everybody a little bit more to pay these kind of things. So it's a, it's a sad situation. I don't know what's going to happen, but I suspect we're going to see a real spike in bankruptcies down the road and um, a tightening of credit for people uh, in the future. So what's this going to mean for you folks? Well, you're going to have a lot less people who are going to be qualified to rent anything. If uh, you can separate the wheat from the chaff, you'll be able to see some of these folks that might be better tenants than others. But this is going to be your tenant pool in three to five years. There are going to be people who've stiffed one or two or more landlords for rent during this pandemic period of time. And um, also that, you know, have, have filed bankruptcy. So it's, it's going to be a tough pool from which to choose for good renters. Um, you know, good renters, good buyers, probably be, you know, few and far between down the road, although everybody will need a place to live. So uh, once again, we'll have to see what happens, but three to five years down the road, we may have to see some additional government intervention here. So um, not, not real good news today, but that's once again, the state of affairs and kind of what's, uh, what's happening out there. Um, all right. Let's talk about tricks of the trade. Uh, thank you, Mercedes, for sending me some of the current ones that you found. Um, I'm going to talk about today using um, essential oils on your furniture. You guys can always find, and you've seen Lemon Pledge and things like that. You can actually use lemon oil, and you can rub it on your furniture, old wood furniture, and it will restore the look of that uh, pretty dramatically, as well as it will function as a bug deterrent. So if you're in an area that has a lot of termites, for example, and you've got wood furnitures or wood built-ins, you can rub just essential lemon oil uh, or orange oil on them, and uh, you'll, you'll get a twofer on that deal. You'll get it, uh, the luster back on the piece of furniture or on the built-in, and you'll get uh, termite protection. So uh, get a two for one. 